Hey friends, welcome back to the Jumpstart. Today we are talking about what to expect in the interview room. My name is Trinity and I am one of the coaches here at Winnipegian Academy and let's just go ahead and jump right in to what to expect in the interview room. Interview is really that piece of competition that we don't get to see. We get to see everything that's going on on stage, the gowns, the talent competitions, all of that stuff. But what really happens behind those interview doors? What do we expect? And here at the Academy, we want you to be so prepared because preparation is really the key to staying calm and confident. And that is everything that we want to project when we walk into that interview room, right? What does that mean to even be prepared, really? And for me, I know a lot of that has to do with dealing with the jitters. I want the jitters to be minimal. As a contestant and also as a performer, because I love to sing, it's really what got me into pageants because I just wanted to be on stage and sing, really. That was the heart of it. I just wanted to sing. But as a contestant and a performer, I personally think like a little bit of jitters is, is okay because it keeps me on my toes. It makes me feel more alert and like I'm putting my best self out there. But there's really a big difference between a little bit of jitters and then just all out nerves where you're thinking, what am I doing? I'm about to run out the door. You know, there's a big difference and that's what we want to avoid. Just a little bit of jitters, that's good. And as coaches, you know, we want you to be prepared, remain calm and just so you can walk in there and own the interview room. That's what we all want, right? Just to have that confidence and feel like we've just owned the room. There was a verse that came to mind this morning that wasn't in my original notes, but I really feel like it applies to this message about what to expect in the interview room and how to prepare for it. And it's actually a verse that I'm um, from my homeschool days with my daughters. We used to homeschool and I absolutely loved it. But there was this verse that our homeschool curriculum had us had us recite almost every day. It was just a big part of our curriculum. And it's from Proverbs, of course. So Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. By wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding, it is established by knowledge. The rooms are filled with precious and pleasant riches. And that came to mind to me because really, when you think about interview, wisdom, understanding and knowledge are all things that we want to project that, that we want to share that we have as potential title holders, future title holders, and just as women in general, that we have wisdom, knowledge and understanding. So that is a verse that I felt like was supposed to be part of today. And hopefully, hopefully that, that, um, that means something. Maybe that was for you this morning. It's one of my favorites. I hadn't thought about it in a while, but it really applies to so, so, so many things. And it can really apply to interview. So there are a couple of things that can be a key to success in interview, okay? And one of them is to just get comfortable asking questions because again knowledge of your situation is just going to ease all of your stress and help you feel a little more prepared so where do you get that knowledge your director who do you ask your questions to directors because as much as I'm going to share with you today there are some things that are really specific to your pageant that only your director can help you with and can only answer. And I'm gonna talk about those specifics too right now. Um, but once you decide what pageant you're gonna enter or even before, check out all of the information that's available to you, either on the website, the Facebook event page, the entry packet that your director has created. It's probably gonna have a lot of information in there. But just in case, get comfortable asking questions. What are some of the specific questions that only your director can answer. Okay, let's talk about that. The environment. Your director, she's gonna know 
like where is the interview is it going to be in a classroom it could be is it going to be in a hotel ballroom like where is the actual interview going to be because once you know where it's going to be you can start visualizing yourself in the room and you're going to start feeling more comfortable even though it's a future it's in the future and you're preparing for it you can see yourself in the room and it's going to make you feel a little more comfortable the more you think about it so where is it going to be are you going to be sitting across the table from a judge is there going to be a podium but what what is the room going to look like so the more you know about that the more comfortable you're going to get with the interview and those are questions that your director can answer she may if she already has all of that ironed out she will probably put it in your entry packet or in the facebook event page her website whatever whatever they've created for the pageant they're probably going to put that out there for you if not those are great questions to ask so you can get comfortable another thing to ask your director about um, and, but this is also very specific to your pageant is the interview style and there's really two main two main interview styles they might vary a little bit from pageant to pageant but really when you look at the root there's two interview styles that are most popular number one is just one-on-one -on -one interview where you are sitting down at a table across from one of the judges and you're having a conversation it's one-on-one -on -one. now in pageant land for some reason this is also known as round robin I don't know where that name came from, but it, it's one-on-one, -on -one, round robin. And I think round robin comes from you walk into the room, you sit down with one of the judges, you talk to that judge, and then you just work your way around the room talking to all of the judges, and then you exit the room. Round robin, one-on-one -on -one style. That's a really popular, really popular interview style where you get, um, you know, I've seen as little as two minutes with a judge all the way up to five or six minutes with a judge. And it, it really all depends on your pageant system and what they allow for you to have with your interview. So anywhere from two minutes to six minutes going around the room with each judge. And that's that's one on one round robin style. The other style that is also really popular is called panel style. And that's where you walk into the room and you're going to see all of the judges sitting at probably like long rectangle tables just side by side and they will all take turns just answering questions you'll either be standing at a podium perhaps they might provide a podium if the venue has that they might provide you a chair to sit in it really those type of specific things are going to vary from pageant to pageant and venue to venue whatever they have to offer for you at the time so those are your two interview styles it's your one-on-one -on -one, uh one-on-one -on -one round robin i gotta say round robin and panel style and then really just to, to go back to don't be afraid to ask questions you know when i was a director i've been a director several times for several different systems and i always loved when contestants would ask me mindful questions because it told me that they were really taking it seriously they were getting prepared and i wanted to help them because i want them to have a great experience at my pageant they, they want you to have a great experience so she's putting all of that together the director's putting all of that information for you together so that you can get prepared and if the answers aren't in the information feel free to reach out and ask questions because we're all human and if she's left something out or if the you know if the director's left something out then then you probably have the same question everybody else is asking so reach out ask questions don't be afraid to ask questions so that you can visualize yourself in the room and get really comfortable with that so that's that so now that you know the environment that might alleviate, alleviate some of the stress and you know eliminate some of the jitters and that's really that's really the name of the game so you've got your interview styles with one-on-one -on -one or panel style you've also got you know don't be afraid to ask questions so moving on i have put together a fun list of what i am now going to call trinity's top 10 tips on what to expect 
in the interview room when I started creating this list. I didn't realize it was going to be as long as 10. And so now I'm just naming it Trinity's Top 10 Tips on What to Expect in the Interview Room. So number one, I have already spent a little bit of time talking about it. So we're just going to touch on it and move on. But it's okay to be nervous. Just accept it and move on. Everybody's nervous. Everybody's nervous. Just know that it's probably going to happen and just move on. Okay. Number two, the time with the judges is absolutely going to fly by, especially if you only have two minutes with each judge or even all the way up to five or six minutes with each judge. The time is going to fly, not fly by. You're going to feel like you sat down, introduced yourself, and then you had to move on. But it's just going to go so fast, which is why it's so important to have your message and your legacy project and all of those things ready to go to be able to communicate quickly and concisely because the time is going to fly by. Number three, and you know, this really could be number one because it's a really, a really important one. You may think it's going to sound kind of silly. But it's definitely worth being said because it's so important, okay? So get ready for it. Number three, <laughs> judges are real people too. They're real people too, okay? They just want to get to know you. And, you know, in Alicia's game plan, we go into detail on how to showcase you as the winner. But they really just want to get to know you because they're just real people too. And saying that reminds me of how real they can be. And I'll just share this story. I was competing a few years ago in a state level Mrs. Mrs. Pageant that went on to national. So this this was a big it, this was a big state level pageant. And we all all the contestants we all get down to the hotel lobby for interview and the judges aren't there. It probably sounded like a really good idea at the time to have the judges, you know, somewhere separate from all the contestants in the hotel. I'm sure that sounded like a great idea. But the reality of it is the judges got lost. They weren't there. They were an hour late. So that's how real it can get. So, you know, we're all human. We're all real in these in in these situations so they were an hour late and so that you know if you're you've got to get your head straight to know that anything can happen we we all plan for the best and hope for the best but crazy things can happen at events especially after 2020 2021 and 2022 we're all just happy to have in-person events right but things like that can happen that you just have to have in the back of your mind that that flexibility and going with the flow if things don't quite go the way the director planned for them to. Have some grace with her because planning an event is not easy. So, especially when your judges get lost. So, an hour later, we got our interview started. So, that's just one example of how real, real we all are in these situations and just to be flexible and be prepared for a little bit of everything. So number four, with the judges, some questions, some judges are going to have pre-planned questions. They may ask everybody the exact same questions and that's okay. Don't be alarmed by that. Others are going to ask more impromptu questions. They may ask more stuff off of your bio or nothing off of your bio. It could just be completely impromptu. And just know that that is okay too, because they're real. And the reality of it is they're probably just as nervous as we are as contestants. Because if you can think about it, put yourself in the, the judge's shoes and there's 30, 40, 50 amazing women that are all qualified walking in the room. That's a pretty serious, that's a pretty serious job to be a judge. So just know that they may have pre-planned questions. They may ask completely impromptu questions. They, they could be just as nervous as you. So number five, which kind of relates to number four, especially when you're thinking about the visualization of the room, 
which can hopefully alleviate some of the stress as you're visualizing all of this and how it could potentially happen once you're getting these bits and pieces. But when you look at it from the perspective that everyone in the room is out of their comfort zone, judges included, the interview might not be as stressful anymore. We're all just people and the judges really want to get to know you and they want you to have a great experience. Truthfully, they do. They want you to have a great experience. So just think on that, that from that perspective, everybody's out of their comfort zone. And just help that, help, hopefully that will help you to visualize things so that you can alleviate some of your stress. So number six, moving on on our list. Number six, there's probably going to be someone other than the director running the interview. So don't be alarmed if you see an unfamiliar face. The director could be running the interview if they don't have a lot of extra help. Hopefully they do have that extra help because it takes a lot of people to, to, to create an event, especially for, for pageants. But just know that there's gonna be someone there running the interview and they're going to be timing the interview. They're going to be telling you when you can walk into the room they're going to tell you where to go stand in the interview. They're even going to tell you when you can start talking. Typically, you don't start talking in an interview until they say something along the lines of, and let's begin, which is gonna feel a little awkward because when you walk into a room, naturally you wanna start talking to people, but they're really gonna ask you not to and say, you know, just go to your spot and then we'll let you know when, when to start, when to start talking. So just know that there's going to be someone there to run, to run interview, and it could be someone new. It could be the director. Hopefully the director's got some help and it's someone, and, 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 and it's someone else running the interview. I know as a director, I have done both. I have run the interview, and then fortunately I've had extra help at times. Either way, you know, thank that person. That's just... Having, having been an event planner, I've, I was even a wedding planner for years, take a moment to thank the person that is, that is running that interview because that is, that is an intense job. And you know, planning events, planning pageants, it's not, it's not easy these days. I've, I've thought about it from the perspective of being a director and an event planner and even in my days of wedding, wedding planning. Just a, a simple thank you to those people that are running the interview room that's going to go a long way for them because that is an intense job. That's just my piece from, from my background in event planning. So number seven, and this kind of relates to number six, but it could be completely quiet when you walk into the interview room and when you leave. That's just part of how, how the interview is structured because again, that, that person running the interview is going to tell you when you can start talking. So just expect that awkward silence when you're walking in and just, just know that it might be there and j just go with it. Just go with it. Just do, just go with what the interview director tells you to do. Go stand in your spot, wait for them to tell you they can start speaking and just know that it could be a little awkward and then probably a whole lot more relaxed when you're leaving the room because everybody, everybody's taking a breath that the interview is done right so that is number seven number eight it could also be and this is the exact opposite of what i just said once the interview gets started it could be really loud in the room because if you think about it you've probably got 10 12 people all talking at the same time and it's going to get really really loud and this is one of those things that when my daughter competed in a pageant last summer I'm also a pageant mom too. So all of you moms watching for your daughters, I have been in your shoes as well. So um, I, I loved being a pageant mom too. But, but last summer, my daughter competed in a teen division in a pageant. And this is one thing that she talked about that, you know, cause she walked out of interview and I wanted to know all the things, how was it? You know, what questions did they ask? How did she feel? Did she have a good time? You know, all the things, you know, all the things that we want to know as moms. And one of her main comments was, it was so loud in there and I could hear everything the girl next to me was saying. So, so if you're prepared and you know that, just know that you might have to focus a little bit more on your conversation 
one on one with the judge because you've got a lot of noise on on each side of you, especially if the tables are really close together or, you know, some of us just pro project our voices more than others. I am naturally soft spoken, so I have to be very aware and project my voice more when I am at a speaking event or even an interview just to make sure with the loudness that I'm being heard. Whereas others naturally have that louder projection in our voices. It is all, you know, it's all about how we're how we're made. So I wanted to bring that up about the noise because it was something that my daughter brought up. Um, when she competed and she really had to focus in to make sure that she could hear all of the questions that were being that were being asked so that's my pageant mom story for you number nine you probably won't get any feedback at least immediately some systems will provide feedback later weeks later some but you know for as far as immediate feedback you're not really going to get any so just know that you did well that you sought out to accomplish what you wanted to do and you succeeded in in completing that interview so just be confident in that release it don't just just leave all those questions in the room and just know that you probably won't get any feedback number 10 and this relates to number nine. Can you see how they all weave together? They all weave together. But number 10, it's also going to be easy to forget once you leave the room, it's going to be easy to forget what questions you were asked in interview. So as quickly as you can, start writing those questions down that you were asked in interview because you're going to want to think about those. You're going to want to remember. You, you can use them for practice questions later, and it, you're just going to want to think about it later. So just as quickly as you can, get to a place where you can start writing some questions down. I know I have pageant questions. I have a list of pageant questions that I've been, um, that I've had from, from interviews in years past, and it's just a great resource to have. So I always love to write down those questions, and that's something that I suggest because you are, as much as I say leave it in the room, and you know just move on and, and don't think about it we're naturally going to think about it so write those questions down as quickly as you can so that you you have them safe for later whenever you want to go back and, and look at them and that is what to expect in the interview as a coach here in the academy thank you so much for watching let's go win a pageant bye for now